Okay, now the fun part. We split the design and now it's time to reassemble it. And this is my piece of fabric. First step, you have to stabilize the whole of your fabric. And if you use a fusible stabilizer, and cover the entirety of the back of it. Doesn't have to be a heavy, heavy weight, but it does help if you use at least a 1.5 ounce one or a 2 ounce one. Okay, so we've stabilized the design, and really you need to print off templates of your design. So I'm just going to open up the first split and say OK. And File Print Preview. I don't want any of that. Um, okay, we'll put in a a Madeira poly if I could see it. There we go. Okay, and there is my print preview. Those of you who use Genome, and if you've got cloth setters, don't rely on your cloth setter for this. Use your alignment mark. You print off all your templates and you piece them together, matching up the alignment lines. And you use that as your main template. So print off one for each. Okay, so there's my design. Now I know because it's Murphy's Law. So when I bring my next design in, it's going to come in on top of that. So I'm going to move that over to one side, deliberately. Because remember, this is a piece of fabric. The outline will stitch. And that acts as a stabilizer. It will base your fabric to your backing. Now if you don't want that one on your first design, hide this colour, click off, and there's nothing around it. If we click it back on, show, that's what's going to stitch first. If you don't want that, split that away, and then delete the colour. But I leave them in and I unpick them later because it's a long stitch. It's between 5 and 7 millimeters and it's not too difficult to remove. You stitch the first part of your design and that's your first alignment line. Then we want to do the second part. So I open that. There is my alignment line. I hoop up a fresh piece of stabilizer, which means I remove this from my hoop. I then push a drawing pin at that end of my alignment line and that end of my alignment line from the back to the front. And if you've got a little bit of cello tape or something, just cover it so as it holds the drawing pins in place. I then lift my fabric and I match the ends of my alignment stitch that's on my fabric over the top drawing pin and the bottom drawing pin. 
and then I carefully smooth my fabric. Now if you use a sticky back stabiliser, fine, but it's got to have no wrinkles and don't distort the weave on your fabric. I just give my stabiliser a quick spritz of Quilter's Adhesive Spray, not heavy, and then I very gently smooth it so as the grain is still correct across, up, down, making certain there's no bubbles and there's no distortion. I then present that to my machine and it will stitch my basting stitch to hold my fabric to my hoop and then this part will stitch. Okay, now I bring in the third part and that's my tree trunk. Now I used a smaller hoop but that's what I wanted and I line that up on that black alignment line there. First of all I stabilize I hoop a piece of stabilizer and I stitch that first alignment line. I push the drawing pins up through the back. I then lay my design over the hoop until the two pins meet. And I spread my fabric, present it to my machine and it will stitch my basting line. and then I stitch this part. Then we bring in the next one. Now this one is just a little bit more problematic for me at this moment here because it shows split before colour. There we go. I want to hide these. You wouldn't do this on the machine. What we'll stitch is the alignment line. And you do the same business again. You move the alignment lines that are on your fabric so as they line up with the alignment line you've just stitched on your stabilizer. Spread it out gently right let's turn this one back on and turn these all back on show all colors and then you stitch the bird out And then we bring in hoop number five. And here he is. And you line up your alignment lines. Same method as before. You find the alignment line on your fabric. You stitch the new alignment line onto your stabilizer. You've pushed the drawing pins through. And remember, you must always remove the drawing pins once you've got it in position. And you just move it into position. Smooth your fabric out so that it's on the straight and cross grain properly. And use your hoop facsimile outline as your basting stitch. Yes, it's going to stitch over your eagle, but it's loose enough to be able to unpick it. Same with all your alignment lines. The stitches are long enough for you to be able to unpick them easily. And then we bring in the final part of the design. And that's split number six. And we do the same again. 
we line them up so as they are exact we smooth our fabric properly we present it to the machine it will stitch the basting line and then it will stitch the cloud and you'll end up with a perfect stitch shot of a large design in smaller hoops and as long as you get your alignment lines correctly <coughs> excuse me <coughs> as long as you get your alignment lines correct no one will ever know you have split the design now you can choose to leave this odd cloud out I'm not suggesting you go out and you buy this design and split this design but what I'm saying to you is if you've got a design which has only got a small bit of embroidery in a corner and it's not going to destroy the rest of the design then don't bother with it, just leave it but if you want the whole of the design then you have to stitch the lot now, I have split numerous designs now and when I first bought my little Janome 10,000 my hoop, biggest hoop, was 14 centimeters by 20 which was 7.5 inches by 8 no, that's not right 7.5 inches by 5 I think it is or 5.5 and I thought, great, this is wonderful. And I love jacket back designs. But I very quickly discovered jacket back designs were a lot bigger still than my biggest hoop for my little Janome machine. So I set about finding how I could learn to split designs. And I found a wonderful lady called Kathy Jones. And she used to do splitting lessons. Well, she's discontinued them now, which is a great pity, because they really were very good. And she showed us numerous ways of how to split a design. Now, I've only shown you one. And if you're really serious about learning to split big designs, there is a lady and there's a link to her from Embroidery Library who does do a DVD on splitting designs and I can't remember her name Murphy honestly can't remember but you will find her on links provided by Embroidery Library for splitting large designs and she does offer as I say, a CD of lessons showing how to do it. I don't know how good she is, but she's very highly spoken of, so and I hope this little set of videos has given you a taste for what you can do, even if you don't have an embroidery machine with a large hoop, which incidentally I now have, so I don't have to split any designs anymore. I went and I bought myself an industrial machine with 12 needles because I also got fed up of changing thread colours and trimming jumps. Okay, right, I've got to go and finish making lunch now so I hope these have been of some use to you and that if you do get the bug for splitting designs Either you use these little videos or you go and you find that lady who does the DVDs. Right, I'm off.